Okay. So this is uh, the, the flow of today's uh, training. The first one is a brief recap of last week's training. That's number one. Then we have here all about IELTS speaking, the uh, criteria that I think you have learned. We have also learned this one last meeting. The next one is um, mastering IELTS speaking, the contents uh, from speaking part one to part three. Then we have a uh, speaking practice, IELTS speaking part two. So I will, I will have here random names. So I will have your four, uh, four of you here to do IELTS speaking part. So only four out of uh, maybe six or seven or eight of you here. So only four will be selected to do IELTS speaking part two, okay? And then the fifth part of uh, today's training is um, uh, teaching demo. That, that is IELTS listening level two and IELTS reading level two, okay? And if we have enough time, we're going to continue with our uh, next uh uh, topic of the training, which is um, IELTS Written Task 1 Academic, all right? <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so let's begin with a brief recap, okay? <clears throat> so uh, I want to ask uh, some of you here to, uh, uh, what is that, um, uh, give us a, a, uh, some some points that some points that you have um, uh, what is that so, so, some info or I would say some useful information that you have um, uh, you have uh, uh, gotten last last week's training okay so um, there are yes one two three four there are four of you here and um, I'm gonna ask you to what is that? Um, give me the, the essential point that you have learned from last meeting. So from last meeting, just one or two essential points, okay? So from last meeting, we have covered the general, uh, what is that, um, the general uh, training, which is, which is about um, what and how to teach, okay? What and um, how to teach, yeah. <clears throat> And we also covered here, uh, we also covered here about the um, alignment, okay? Yeah, alignment of um, strategies and uh, or structures in teaching. Yeah, the, the only difference here is, uh, the only dif difference is the level of dif difficulty. And we also talk about, um, we also talk about uh, giving of instructions, et cetera, okay? Yeah. So I want you to, if you have uh, taken down notes, right, I want you to check your notes there and I want you to tell, to tell us or to tell the, the group here about the essential points or point that you have, um, I would say that you have, um, I would say learned or that you, that you think is useful for you, right, from our previous um, training, okay? So... I'm going to give you a minute, yes, to uh, check your notes, okay? So I'm going to give you a minute to check your notes. And after a minute, I want you to tell the class or to tell the group about the essential points that you have um, learned or you think is most useful for you from our previous training, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to give you here a minute to, um, I would say, uh, get over with your notes and and um, tell us about, again, the uh, essential points that you have um, acquired or learned from the, from the previous part of our training, okay? <clears throat>
Okay, so I'm gonna have here random names. So I'm gonna um uh, spin the wheel, and uh, once your name is selected, I want you to again uh tell us about the essential point or points uh which you think uh could be very useful for you, uh or you have um uh, you have learned from our previous training. Okay. So let me share to you the screen, okay? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Here, let's spin the wheel. <laughs> okay, so Jovi, yeah. Uh, can you tell Hi, us sir. about yes? How are you today, Jovi? How are you? Um, doing good. Doing Actually, good. um, to be honest, I'm babysitting my my kid or my oh. my infant while having the, this training. <laughs> wow, that's lovely. How old is your infant? Um, she's three months old. Three months old, right? It's your first infant, your first child. Yeah. Your first yeah. child. Wow. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's um really a tough job. I really understand you 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 because I'm also a father of two kids. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, Jovi, do you have there? Um can you tell us you, you may not open the video if you're like busy, okay? So yeah, can you tell us what's uh, what are those essential, essential points uh that you have acquired from last meeting's training? Um as I can remember um wait. Mm. Just be brief, uh, be concise of giving instructions to your students mm -hmm. and as much as possible, uh, give them the, uh, give them the, the, the easiest oh. words, um, and match that match to their level. Right. Exactly. Okay. Right. I love that. Okay. So it's like the, the part of learning you have learned there is that, um, yes, um, when we give instructions to our students, uh, we should make it as simple as possible. Instructions that could match their level. Okay, very good. That's nice. That's, thank you, Joey. Um, thank you. Yes, let's hear from the next one we have here. Let's spin the wheel and let's see who's going to be the next. Okay, we have here. Uh, okay, Mary Rose. All right. Yeah, hello. Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> good afternoon, Mary. How are you today, Mary? Yeah, I am pretty good. <laughs> uh, you're good. You're great. Okay. Yeah. So, Mary, tell us about some of the social points that you have learned from last meeting's training. Yeah. So, uh, like what um, I mean, teacher Joey uh, mentioned. So, it's very important that um, I mean, uh, we give a clear instruction to our student on mm -hmm. what to do on each part of um uh, the exam, mm -hmm. and then um explain to them uh, the easiest word. So that uh they can understand uh I mean uh the context of the of the paragraph. The lesson so, was yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, lesson. Yeah. And aside mm -hmm. from that, so the things that I really like uh, I mean uh, in our previous lesson is that um like for example, uh when the student uh didn't experience the question mm -hmm. about the IELTS speak. speaking. Right. Yeah. So what I have learned is that um so the student should uh should answer like if I were given a chance or the opportunity something like that yeah because you know what I am also teaching IELTS to my student and then sometimes uh the students are making um stories and then when I yeah when I tell uh them that is it true and then uh they will just say that uh it's just a makeup story so right. I think that would really help um uh, I mean in order for them to help them in answering right. that. Right, exactly. That's lovely, uh, Mary. Okay, so exactly. So again, as I've, uh, yes, as I have recalled that there is no right mm -hmm. or wrong in IELTS speaking, right? And uh, making up stories is a skill, but again, it, it is a trap as well. Okay, so yeah, it's yeah. better, yeah, it's better to be honest. Okay, it's better to be honest when we do our speaking and uh, we, we use their conditionals. Very good. Yeah. So if if I had a chance to visit this museum, probably I would, I would go there twice, et cetera, et cetera. So we use conditionals. It means that um, we're giving conditions or mm -hmm. unreal, unre unreal situations. So good. That's great, Mary. Uh, anything you else so you much. want Anything else you want to say, uh, Mary? Uh, nothing. That, that, yeah. That's all. Okay. That's all. okay. Next, let's hear from... <clears throat> 
Who's next? Eileen, right. Again, next after Eileen, we have uh, Captania. All right. <clears throat> Yes, good afternoon, Joe, good and good afternoon, everyone. Right, Eileen, good afternoon. How are you, Eileen? Um, feeling good, Joe. You're feeling good, that's nice. Okay, so it's sunny. It's a, is it sunny today? Yes, yes, Joe. Mm, great. So what, tell us about what, what are essential points that you have learned from last meeting's training, Eileen? Um, since it's my first time to attend this kind of training, Joe, mm -hmm. I'm really inspired with the um, quote, quotation which stated that be patient some things take time right. therefore in teaching IELTS we should always get ourselves involved in order that mm. our clientele will really trust us at the same time if mm. we are committed we would be able to give them the needed uh, materials appropriate mm. strategies and necessary for their learning Right. Okay. Very good. That's lovely. Okay. So be patient. Okay. Um. More. Actually. Um. Uh, most of the times, really take time. Okay. So just be patient. Again, and uh, trust the process. Okay. Right. Um. It's really true because according according to science and researchers, that our mind is a troubleshooter. It always think of answer, 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 answer. So that is our the nature of our mind. Okay. But uh, uh, we should also manage our mind by telling it that okay be patient uh, some things takes really time okay and same thing with teaching so we teach students from IELTS basic and we think it's really poor um, level yeah but if you trust the process and if you trust that they have learned every day uh, they can they can you know step forward and learn okay last one is Catania <clears throat> Catania are you there Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I'm so sorry. Y yes, good afternoon. So tell us, Katania, about the social points which you have learned from last meeting, Katania. Um, yes, sir. Based on our training last time, I've learned that um, for IELTS, it's not a test of knowledge, mm. but basically it's about how you can articulate what you have in mind. Mm. So right. it's important to have a wide range of vocabularies. Mm. It can help you explain and elaborate more details about the questions and about your answers. Right. So it like what um teacher Eileen said, it takes time. So right. yeah, so I think it really, it really takes patience and time mm. to learn uh the words and how we can uh use grammar points to make mm. our ourselves fluent. And understandable. Right, right, exactly. Okay, so it's like this. Um, yeah, exactly. So, uh, what is this? Uh, learning actually, uh, learning small step is not really small. Actually, it's big thing. All right. So if they learn small things at a time, and later on it becomes something really big. All right. So, <laughs> very good. That's nice. Okay. So that's our recap for today. All right. So. We have learned here about the alignment of strategies, the giving of instructions, all right, um, make, keeping our instructions clear, concise, simple, and direct, and that matches to students' level, all right, and uh, also as teachers, yes, um, we have to get immersed into the real IELTS, all right, so that uh, we can uh, be more skillful in making hard, uh, like IELTS is hard, and making it really simple for students okay so always remember that people like simple things okay so if you have your smartphone now we love our smartphone because it's really simple and also direct okay now let's move on to our next um part of the training which is we have to review uh speaking part one to three and the criteria for IELTS speaking and after that we move on to mastering the contents of IELTS speaking okay now this mastering of the contents also helpful not only to your students but to you as well okay so let's be let's review here the criteria and uh, speaking part one two and three now um i think we have learned this last meeting speaking part one two and three so i'm going to call random names and tell me if you have remember about speaking part one part two okay so let's see okay uh before i'm going to share my points okay um let's see if you remember the, the the some of the points we have we have um 
shared from last meeting about speaking part one and speaking uh, speaking part one, part two, and part three. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let's do first the uh, criteria. All right. This one. Okay. <clears throat> of uh, IELTS speaking. Now, for your IELTS speaking, uh, the first criteria that will be uh, we will be judged. Okay, yeah. the examiners are very judgmental. Right, we hate uh, we don't like people who are judgmental, but they judge us. Okay, yeah. So the uh, four uh, criteria that the examiners judge us is first of all the FC, or we call this fluency and coherence okay and the second second criteria is um lr or lexical resource in 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 the most ordinary term it means vocabulary okay so lexical resource this is very uh, this is a jargon of uh, linguists use it again okay? or in other words um this is vocabulary all right <laughs> or words all right and we have here the logic of our answer. And after that, we have the GRA. So the gram grammatical range and accuracy. And I think we have learned this last meeting. Okay. And I want you to take your uh, to check your notes there. And, and then I'm going to ask uh, uh, some of you here, what, what have you remembered about this one? And then we have the pronunciation again. Okay? Yeah. So again, guys, uh, just get your notes ready uh, because I'm going to call random names and uh, probably share us what you have understood from our last meetings, uh, introduction to IELTS speaking. So I've given you already the uh, introduction to IELTS speaking from last uh, last meeting right, about speaking part one. Okay. Now for fluency and coherence or logic, uh, so we have learned that um, uh, we have to ask the question is, is your answer, is your answer easy to understand? That's it. All right, and if it's easy to understand, we have learned from last meeting that, okay, which which uh, follows then is the lexical resource, okay? So if your answer is easy to understand, first of all, uh, does it have a clear um, uh, clear flow, okay? <laughs> so does it have a clear flow? And after the flow, here comes the next criterion, which is LR. So to make it easy to understand, uh, we have learned that the most powerful tool for understanding your IELTS speaking part one, part two, and even your part three it, are the descriptive words, okay? Always remember that. So this means the um, adjectives and adverbs, all right? <clears throat> oh, and then next is... Um, does it have a clear flow? It also uh, answers the question with the use of GRA. Now, as I have mentioned earlier, the most powerful grammar here, right, for um, IELTS speaking is the use of the tenses, okay? The correct use of the tenses, mostly, again, okay? because, again, in IELTS speaking, it asks you about the past, the present, and the future, all right? So, uh, for example, uh, for example, who did you like most when you were a child? Okay, so this is past. Who did you like? Uh, who did you like most? Uh, when you were when you were a child? Okay. And um, uh, the question is, can you tell me about your hometown? This is present tense. All okay? right. For example, and then um, and um. For the for the future, what what would your hometown be like ten years from now? So, what would your hometown, for example, uh, be like uh, five years from today? Okay, this future. So basically, uh, for IELTS speaking, the most useful grammar there are the tenses. So we have these simple tenses, we have the perfect tenses, and we have the progressive uh, continuous tenses or progressive tenses. Okay, that's it. And other grammar. Um, the most obvious mistake that students can can fall are the tenses. So that is why we ha you have to, as teachers we have to review these tenses pretty well, okay, and 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 uh, sharpen more about the correct uses of the tenses, okay. And then later on we study about pronunciation. Actually, pronunciation is a wide range, okay. So 
we may think, um, teacher, what is uh, what, what covers pronunciation? So we will learn this today, okay? Now, last meeting, we also learned about IELTS speaking part one. We studied about the three E's, okay? IELTS speaking part one. We studied about the three E's, okay? And I want you to check your notes, and I'm going to spin the wheel again and um, tell us about what it means by three E's, all right? If you have notes, okay? And then we have IELTS speaking part two. Why is it called individual long-term? Okay, individual long term in short i'll speaking in part one is also called uh the interview okay but again it's not about the interview about your job okay it's okay i'm gonna ask uh, one of you here to tell us about what the interview means here and finally we have the IELTS speaking part three uh which is the um ar argumentative okay making an argument okay making an argument or argumentative questions yeah or um, two-way discussion. So, so as generally we say we say a two-way discussion. So we, we discuss, we, we argue, okay? So the examiner asks and then you uh, answer. Now we have the, uh, we have the uh, method here for speaking part two, if you remember, okay? So we have what we call the window method. Okay. And then for uh, IELTS speaking part three, we have the PREE method. Paraphrase, reason, explain, an example, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna spin the wheel and uh, my first question is, uh, can you tell us about what the interview is, okay? Can you, can you tell us about what you have, um, uh, what can you recall from the previous training about IELTS speaking part one? Okay, so once your name is uh, once your name is selected, so I want you to tell us about what you have remembered or what what can you recall? Again, there's no force here. If you can remember very little, that doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, sometimes our memory actually cannot be trusted. Okay, <laughs> because um, a volunteer. Wow, that's lovely. Okay, <laughs> I like volunteers. Okay, okay Eileen, volunteer. Yeah. I like that. Okay, actually, yes, I like volunteers. So please volunteer if you can. If you, if you can volunteer, volunteer. Okay, Eileen, tell us about the speak. IELTS speaking part one, the interview, the three E's, please. Uh, yes, sir. For the IELTS speaking part one, three E's. Mm -hmm. I have just taken note here. Uh, the meaning of three E's is the easy experience mm -hmm. and expound. Right. Okay. And uh, yeah, what else can we? What else should we do in the IELTS speaking part one? So in IELTS speaking part one, why is it called the it's, interview? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an interview because in this part you are about to ask questions from their personal, nice. um, exper ex experiences such as on the places, things, ah, right, um, persons, it. and etc. And events, very good. Okay, so you will be asked questions, uh, very personal questions or per uh questions that are related to your experiences. Okay such as places, things, events, and people. Very good, okay, don't forget that, okay? As teachers, uh, don't forget that. Uh, we have your places, uh, places, things, events, and people, okay? So this one, okay? So we will be asked uh, questions very much related to our experiences, right? Um, about people, things, things, events, and, pe uh, and places, okay? Very good. <clears throat> Here, anyone who would like to volunteer, um, tell us about I was speaking part two, the individual long term and the in, and the window method. So what is individual long term? Why is it called individual long term? Okay. And what is the window method? Okay. That is a question you need to answer. Okay. No volunteer. Okay. If there, if there is no volunteer, okay, except for Eileen, I'm going to spin the wheel. All right. And um, I want to, anyway, you have, if you have your notes there, you can open your notes. All right. You also have your IELTS course book, right? So you can check your IELTS course book. Uh, it's there, right? So, um, yeah. Uh, okay, get ten. Yeah, okay. Let's let's try this one. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay here. Okay.
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Catania <laughs> has been chosen. Congratulations, Catania. So, Catania, anyway, um, here's my question. For IELTS speaking part two, <clears throat> it's, indivi it's called individual long term. So, why is it called long term? All right. And what is the window method? Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So, for long term, um, because it here in for the long term, you will be using some a few cards uh, and you will be timed for preparation and for answering the few cards, right? For IELTS part two, mm. and then uh, for the window, uh, what do you call that? For the window method, yes. Method, um, uh, there will be four quadrants. Uh, so, right, four quadrants, very good. Four quadrants mm -hmm. are four windows. For the mm -hmm. first one, it's more of like, uh, first you have your topic. Mm -hmm. So for the first one, it will talk about where. Mm -hmm. So that's the first question about where. Right. And then it will uh, have more sub-questions. Mm -hmm. Like where did it happen? When did it happen? And right. who did the person um experience it with? Uh, and yeah. then on the second uh, window, it consists of the uh, uh, why question. Mm. So for the why question, um yeah, it it uh, gives us the reason why. Why did the um uh, person go there or, and yeah so it's more of a elaboration right and then for the third quadrant it has what yeah we give um, more examples you will have to state there the activities that you have done at that specific situation and for the last quadrant you will have another why so if you enjoy or if you were happy or if you were not satisfied or whatever your answer for the third quadrant, you will explain more. Right. Very good. That's nice. Okay. So the window method also called uh, note-taking parts. Okay. Yeah. The mm -hmm. note-taking part, which is uh, you'll allow to have your prep time. How, how long is the preparation time? How many? Uh, yes. One minute. Uh, right. And a speaking time. Two minutes. Yes, very good. Two minutes, two minutes for speaking time. Okay, uh, one to two minutes, and I I ask my students to speak more, so they should reach at least two minutes. Very good. That's well explained. Now let's hear from IELTS speaking part B. Very good. That's nice. That's lovely. Okay. Uh, thank yes, thank you, Katania. For IELTS speaking part three, we have here. It's why is it called two way discussion? All right, and uh, what is the PREE -E method? Okay. What is the main goal of this IELTS speaking part three? Okay, yeah. So. Let's spin the wheel and let's see who's going to, uh, who's that? Um, Eileen, right? Uh, Tanya, right? And uh, Jovi, Jovi, yeah. Uh, who, who spoke uh, lately? It was, it was, oh no, Mary is uh, not here. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I have to, no, no, no. Tanya is finished, yeah? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, it's right here. Mary uh, against Jovi, okay? Let's see. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, that's lucky for Joby, okay? Uh, Joby, you there? Oh, yeah, I, I'm here. Great, thanks, Joby. I'm so, sorry. Yeah, so Joby, tell us about uh, IELTS speaking part three. Why is it called a two-way discussion and what is a PRE method, okay? All right, Um, I can't really recall what that PREE -E means, but uh, all I understand about part three is it's the follow-up questions in part two. Mm -hmm. So it's also a test of knowledge. No, no, it's a test of communication rather. Yes. So I, I can't really explain further what PREE -E means, but it's, uh, oh, far phrasing. And then, yeah. Right. Explanation. Uh, an example, right? Example. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. I can recall it now. <laughs> mm. I'm really right. sorry. No problem. No problem, Jovi. Yeah. So kids, uh, now that you have recalled what is a PRE means, okay. So paraphrase, reason, explain, an example. So tell us, 
about uh what it means about this i mean it, if there's more you want to say about um pre method um pre method uh, actually you're going to give uh, more examples mm -hmm. about about your explanation mm -hmm. so for example you'll, you 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 will going to explain about um why you love your hometown or why things happen this way mm. just just cite an example all right okay that's it so i haven't expounded here last meeting and i'm going to expound it today okay about i was speaking part three very good that's nice so now let's move on to our next part which is a brief recap of everything all right for i speaking part one part two and part three and then move on, moving on to uh mastering the contents and we have practice speaking okay yeah, so let's move on. Let's have first a, re a recap of um, uh, all about IELTS speaking, okay? <clears throat> Here. Let me share the screen. Yeah. So again, for the IELTS speaking part one, it is called the interview or uh, uh, the three E's because you'll be asked questions, okay, uh, that are relevant to your experiences. That includes places, that includes your experience about the places you have visited, the things you have, the events you have joined, and the people you know or you met, okay? Then we have here the three E's. It's because the easiest experience, it's your story, and all you have to do is just to expound, okay? Then for grammar, again, you have to use complex sentences. Um, that, that is the main difference between IELTS and normal conversation because in IELTS, you really have to expound, okay? Yeah, because it is a test of your communication skills, okay? Next, for IELTS speaking part two, it is called the individual long term because you'll be given one minute, there will be a cue card and you will have one minute preparation time and two minutes speaking time. And the same thing, you will be given a cue card, uh, um, different, uh, di different uh, task, um, um, task that could ask you about people, places, things, or events. Okay, and then we have to use here the window method, which is uh, there are four quadrants, and this window method is used for note taking. So you have one minute preparation time, and uh, one to two minutes for your speaking time. Okay, mm. that's it. And now for uh, speaking part three. It's called a two-way discussion because the examiner is going to ask you questions, argumentative questions, all right? And what you have to do is you really have, uh, you have to, con to convince your examiner of your point, okay? That um, uh, convince you, the examiner of your answer, all right? Now, the examiner is going to control the time so strictly, all right? So... Some of your students may complain that um, the examiner stopped me, all right, uh, stopped me and asked me another question. This is the most common situations. And it's because, all right, and it's because the examiner has a strict control of the time. So that is why you have to be very direct with a paraphrase. Give your reason directly. I don't go around, uh, around circles, all right? Then you have to explain that and then you have to give your example. So we have here, for example, in number one, uh, question number one, for example, we have a paraphrase here. So should people have to own a luxury device? So first of all, you have to paraphrase. So we have, I believe that not all, yes, people should get an expensive gadget. So we have here luxury, that is a paraphrase for expensive and device, a paraphrase for gadget, okay? And have to, uh, we have your should, which is a should is a paraphrase for have to, okay? Then you have to give your reason or point. Um, owning a luxury device is an individual preference, is a choice, okay? Then you have to give your explanation. Uh, why do you think it's a, is a choice? And you have to give an example, all right? Now, for example, all right, or in the example, let me... Uh, let me uh, let me make it very clear, all right, that when you give an example, it should be a general example, okay? So, so for the example, again, make it very clear, it should be, I would just say, no personal experience as your example, okay? No personal experience, all right? Now, some students, um, some students fall into the trap 
of giving examples using their personal experience. And this is basically not acceptable because your experience is a very subjective um, point. Okay, and if, it, if it's very subjective, it means that um, no one ever knows your experience, all right? No one ever knows um, what, what happened, what happened, what, what happened to you, okay? I mean, rarely, all right? So that is what we have to use. We have, the example that we're going to use here is the um, generally observed, okay? Generally observed um, situations, all right, or events, okay? That means uh, most people have an idea about it, okay? So this is the, the kind of example that we're going to give, okay? Generally observe situations or events, okay? Yeah. Anyway, don't worry. I'm going to have, we're going to have a small practice about speaking. And then I'm going to check if uh, we have followed this, uh, we have followed this uh, speaking part three method. We have the paraphrase. For paraphrasing, that's simply synonyms, all right? But the simplest paraphrase there is the, to change the function of the word, okay? The simplest paraphrase, all right? To change the function of the word. So what is the function of the word? So it could be a adjective to noun, noun to verb, okay? And verb to, uh, adjective to adverb, for example, all right? And another way of paraphrasing is using synonyms, okay? Now for reason, for reason here, you only have to give one, one reason. Okay, only one. Okay, that's it. One main reason. All right. And for explanation, you just have to give the reason why as to explain, and then use an example. The example there should be generally observed situations or events. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so we will practice later on, yeah. Um, I'll speaking part one, part two, and part three, okay? Now let's move on to mastering the contents for speaking. <clears throat> yep. So let's check here. This one. So let's move on to mastering the contents of speaking. Now let's start first with uh, speaking part one, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So for speaking part one, the uh, how to improve your speaking part one is that you have to offer more details, okay? You have to offer more details, all right? <clears throat> so for example, uh, uh, let me... Uh, your your previous knowledge or experience is very helpful to your students, okay? Because uh, uh, it, it can help them, uh, you, you can help guide your students about offering uh, details, okay? So for example, I'm, I'm just gonna give you one example. Okay? So for places, for example, this is, yeah. Again, your, um, what is that? Your experience, all right, can help students or can guide students about offering detail. Let me give you an example, okay? Yeah. For example, about places, okay? Now, this is how I demonstrate to my students about places, okay? When I, when I offer details. For example, if I say, um, where is your hometown, okay? Or can you tell us, about, can you tell me about your hometown? Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, this is a place okay, or places, and the question is about can you tell me about your hometown? That's it. Now, as as we have learned in the previous training, the most useful here is using adjectives. All right. Yeah. Uh, noisy, quiet, crowded, etc. Not only that, your knowledge about places also matters a lot in guiding your students. So how I, how do I demonstrate that to my students? First of all, I would I would um, right here, um, okay, the places, okay, to do, to to what is that? Uh, for you to have for students to have this um, <clears throat> uh, broader 
I would say, um, like description of where they live. All right. So I demonstrate here the uh, four circles. Yeah. For example. So again, as teachers, your experience matters a lot to your students because you can guide them on how to expound their answers. All right. So for example, you can tell us about your hometown. And I would say that I would I will not just say about like why and use adjectives, etc. So I must be very specific about <clears throat> about where your where your hometown is. Okay. So for example, yeah, there are how many circles here. Now Mm. Oh, guys, let me make me uh, this one again. Mm. Okay. So wait. Let me close the whiteboard here. Sorry for that. <clears throat> okay, here. So, for example, yeah, here at the center, center, and then next one, and then next one, and then next one, okay? Now here at the center, this is the city center. So for example, if I ask my student like, uh, can you tell us about your hometown? So you, they would say, well, um, I'm currently living at uh, the city center of, for example, Dean City, okay? So this is the city center. <clears throat> and then next to that, this one is the suburban area. Okay. If you live in a suburban area, <clears throat> And here next to that is the outskirt again. Okay. So that's the outskirts of your um, uh, province. And then we have here the countryside, okay? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that's one, okay? <clears throat> okay, so again, your previous knowledge really matters a lot to your students. Okay, so if I asked him, for example, or this can also be useful in their IELTS speaking part too when they talk about places, for example. Okay, so they would say, I live at the city center of Vin City. Uh, the place is, uh, uh, I've been here for like this and that. And uh, I, I, I pretty much like this place because it has all access to, although this place is crowded and noisy, but it has access to um uh main roads entertainment etc etc okay so apart from using apart from using the adjectives there all right so they really have to um specify which uh place or like um a specific place that that they are currently living or a uh, specific place of their hometown so are they living in the city center some urban area outskirts or the countryside okay <clears throat> so that's how i explain it to them next one is um yeah, next one is about the places, okay? All right, so we have uh, some places here. There is, which one is here? Hmm. Again, we still here at places, all right? So places and then um, hometown, <clears throat> yeah. Now there are also different places. There is what we call the, uh, uh, some students, for example, they live in a quiet village, all right? So that is a residential area. So they must also specify which place they are in, okay? So are they in the residential area? Are they living in the, um, let's say, for example, um, large industrial area? So anyway, um, we have the industrial area. We have your commercial area. Yeah. And we have your uh, residential, uh, industrial, um, commercial area <clears throat> yeah that's it and we have your agricultural area yes if you live in the countryside so you probably live in the agricultural area all right or farm area all right 
So for houses, we have your flats and uh, uh, for residential area, we can find their flats and uh, flats or apartments, okay, and houses. And then we have here uh, factories. If you live close to the factory, for example, yeah, or factories. And then we have here commercial area. This is business area. Now for the, yeah, for the business area, um, that's a working access to shops, okay? Yeah, for example, there are uh, street shops, malls, etc. Okay. Then agricultural area, of course, a farm area. Okay. So if students, for example, uh, specify because again they have to expound the answer. So if if they say that they live in a residential area, so apart from that, they have to use also adjectives. For example, they would say, "I live in a quiet, a peaceful residential area." Okay. So for example, okay, quiet and uh, peaceful. <clears throat> A residential area or they can say i live in a large busy large and uh, noisy for example uh, industrial area okay so these are just some things that they can use actually places are the questions that where students can uh can elaborate okay apart from these places you can also ask them to use okay Yes, again, first one is about the locations, okay, like uh, if they live in a city center, locations of the, like, province, okay, and then specific areas, we have residential, industrial, commercial, agricultural area. Next one is we have the uh, the language of location, okay, yeah, yeah, language of location. So we the language of location here, we will, we, you will learn that in IELTS writing task one about maps, okay? So uh, uh, we have here north, east, south, okay? Uh, next, behind, okay? These, these are the language of location, okay? Uh, next to, um, in front of, okay? Yes, in front of, um, um, at the back, etc. okay? So the language of location. Now, the very useful language of location here is the use of just, okay, this one, which means near, okay? So for example, um, I am currently living, um, I'm currently living um, just uh, by, uh, by, the, by the busy, for example, main road, okay? Yeah, I'm currently living by the busy main road, okay? So very close. To the main road okay so just here means near or very close to okay yeah <clears throat> that's it <clears throat> okay so again um to expound let me give you a recap okay i want you to take down notes okay because uh your books may be uh yeah your books are helpful but this is for your um additional info hopefully i, I hope so all right or maybe you know this one already so um yeah <clears throat> Again, so when expounding about places, all right, yeah, uh, please take note there, all right. First thing is we need to uh, specify about the exact, um, um, like, uh, locate, uh, what is that, um, like location in, in, in the province, okay, or in their town, okay. Again, is it is it in the city center? So we have here, are they in the city center? Are they in the suburban area? Are they in the outskirts, all right? Or are they living in the countryside? Or is their hometown in, in the countryside, okay? Okay, so and then, before we add adjectives and adverbs, because adjectives and adverbs are, are the given, um, I would say the given um, tool we have to use, okay, in, in uh, expounding our answers, all right? Then after that, uh, we have the uh, different areas, okay? Yeah. So we have in different areas. We have um, we have the uh, residential area, okay. Then we have the uh, commercial or business area. Uh, we have the um, agricultural area, and we have the industrial area, okay. Um, I'm currently living at um, just by the uh, just a few meters away from the. From the industrial area, okay, industrial and commercial area. Okay, so again, I'm currently living uh, just a few meters away from 
industrial and commercial area. Okay, so the commercial area is located to the north, to the north of where I live. Okay, so again, the next one is use the language of location. Okay. So we have here north, south, east, west, okay, etc. <clears throat> and we have um, um, behind, next to, just, okay. Um, uh, <clears throat> so again, for example, um, I'm currently living at the I'm currently living at the city center of 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 uh being being city and my 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 house is located just a few meters away, okay, just a few meters away from the industrial and commercial area, okay. That's it. So I use all three, okay. So my house or my um yes uh my my and my house is located just a few meters few meters away from from industrial and uh, commercial area. So the industrial area is located just to the north of from my house, and the commercial area is just about is is at the southwest. Okay, from my house. Okay, that's for places. So again, apart from giving uh, adjectives and adverbs, you have to help them help your students about specifying which uh, location they're currently living. Okay. Now for next is for um is for uh describing um. Uh, things okay. Um, yes. <clears throat> okay. So for describing things, I think it's you're very familiar with Osascom. I I think so. Okay. Um. um <clears throat> or even a uh, place uh, of of in buildings. Okay. Things and buildings. <clears throat> things and buildings. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're very familiar to this. Um, let me ask one of you here if you if you have heard about this one. These are the order of adjective, yeah. And uh, I'll just ask if you're familiar with this one. Order of adjective, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me spin the wheel and 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 I just um, ask. Uh, yes. Who knows? I... I, I I want volunteer. Volunteer is the best. Okay. Who who is who All is? Right. Um. Okay. So. As far as this I remember, Jovi. it's yes, yes, Jovi. That's yes. it. Mm. Um, determiner, um, determiners, ordinals, cardinals, um, size, shape, age, color, materials, origin. Oh, right, and purpose. Very good. <laughs> Yeah, that's purpose. Very good. That's nice. Okay. Okay. I don't need to elaborate. Okay. So the the things in buildings. So you have to see their your opinion, size, age, shape, color, uh, origin, material, and purpose. So origin is where it come from, and purpose. Very good. That's nice. Okay. So that's how we when you describe things or buildings. Okay. So, for example, if uh, if one is asked about a phone, for example, so they have to use this order of adjectives. Okay. Yeah. Then for persons, right? Uh, people, yes, describing uh, people, uh, what is most important here, here, here is describing not only their personality, yes, yeah, <clears throat> okay, not only their personality, not only their physical appearance, all right, so if, uh, um, but also the most useful here is describing, for example, their emotions, okay, emotions, right, for example, um example of this describing emotions is my father is very supportive okay uh, uh supportive reliable credible etc okay um that's it okay so also describing emotions all right so for example if the question is who do you look up to all right so uh, apart from personality which is for example generous um kind uh what else um uh humorous all right that's personality uh you should also try to uh, invite or encourage your students to uh, talk about um, emo describing emotions. Are they uh, supportive, for example? Um, are they, um, what is that, um, credible or trustworthy, etc. Okay. And for events, now for events, the most useful here for events apart from, um, what is that, apart from um, adjective and adverb is the, uh, the flow of the event, okay? Yes, describing, yes, yeah. Yeah, describing the flow of the events. 
all right? So I think this is easy, okay? So for example, what happens first, next, second, and so on, okay? So this is how you um, like expound, or this is how we invite our students to expound their answers, all right? That's it. So, and then um, any questions, okay? Any questions about places, things, buildings, people, events, if they have all these things ready, and I think it would be much easier for them to expound the answer, all right? That's it. So that's for uh, offering details for IELTS speaking part one. Okay, again, we need to offer details, all right? <clears throat> now for speaking part two, we have your three parts, the opening, the points, and conclusion. And speaking part three, they're making an effective argument. Now let's move on to uh, speaking part one, okay? So for the speaking part one, for example, yes, these are some phrases, all right? Uh, we can, uh, your students can use when talking about likes or dislikes, all right? So we have here another good thing, I enjoy, I really like, I find something very enjoyable, um, not very keen on, and I find something very unpleasant. And I think you can learn all these, you know, IELTS course books, okay, which I don't need to, to expound more, okay? But again, um, adding to this, Adding to these expressions are are these okay yeah <clears throat> okay now for speaking part two okay here is the thing about speaking part two okay here how to master the content in speaking part two <clears throat> now for speaking part. Two, apart from the window method we have learned in the past, okay? Now, we should remember, first of all, it must have an opening. So the opening here must be natural, okay? Must be natural. It's like telling a story. And I think, uh, and I think that a majority of women actually uh, love telling a story, okay? Yeah, so you, you, you have... An exciting opening, okay. But remember to make it brief opening, okay. Make it short, all right. Um, all right here, brief opening, okay. Then after you open your story, all right, you have to tell the points, okay, or the contents. So the contents can be found in your uh, notes, which is the window method again. This one. So you can find the contents there. And finally, you have to end your talk, okay? End your talk, finish it, all right? Now, this is the problem in some students, when they deliver their IELTS speaking part two, they just stop talking, all right? They just pause and stop. And I asked them, are you finished? And they said, yes, I'm, I'm done, all right? It's finished. So we have to end your talk, all right? Now, here's the key to end your talk, all right? Again, we have your opening. We have the content, and we have finishing of the talk. Let's have an exercise, okay? <clears throat> I want you to listen. Yeah. Hmm. I want you to... Uh, uh, not this one, okay? This is about the uh, events, okay? I will explain to you about the events, okay? Yeah. And thanks, okay? Yeah. Okay, so let's have, let's have an activity, okay? Um, this is the window method. We have here, the question here is that, uh, what he like to do in the future? What does it involve? Uh, when he like to do it? And why good for his health, okay? Now we're, we're going to listen twice and what you need to do apart from note taking, because again, this is the notes, okay? First of all, all right, so first of all, we're going to take down notes of his answer, all right? So again, we're going to have an activity here. And what we need to do is we're going to have, or we're going to take down notes of his answer. And the second one is we're going to listen again and take down notes of the opening and the ending of his talk, all right? Because again, there is always opening and ending of one's talk. In all speaking, um, example answers is always opening content and ending of the talk, okay? So again, let's have this exercise, okay? I want you to get your notes ready. Yeah, <clears throat> if you have your notes there. So in this activity, the first thing we need to do is this one. Um, 
we're going to listen, all right, and take notes of his answer, all right, following the window method, all right. And after that, we're going to listen again. Yeah, yeah. We're going to we're going to listen twice, basically. So we're going to listen again, and we're going to take the notes of the introduction of his talk, and the ending of his talk. All right. Okay. And let's see how he introduced his answer and how he ended his talk. All right. Okay. So get your notes ready, and um, yeah. Because I'm going to ask a random, all right, random, or if there's a volunteer, that would be great. Okay. Okay. Let's listen, all right? <clears throat> well, I'm quite fit because I do a range of sports like running and and tennis, but um, I've always dreamed of taking part in a triathlon. I really like the idea of that. Um, a triathlon's a multi-sport event, but rather a hard one. It basically consists of swimming, cycling and running events, but you have to do them one after the other. You know, there are no breaks, so it would be quite a challenge. You can do various distances for each sport. There's an Olympic distance, which I wish I could do, but it would be too much for me. However, I think I'm likely to finish if I choose a shorter course. There's one that's, um, I think it involves a 750 meter swim, followed by 20 kilometers on the bike, and then a 5 kilometer run. As for when I take part in it, I'm not sure. Looking ahead, I don't expect I'll be able to tackle it until my academic year's ended. That means I'd be thinking in terms of maybe doing it in a year's time. That would be realistic, because I'd need time to train and really get into shape. It's not something that I could do in a hurry. Um, obviously, it would be a really healthy thing to do because it would force me to get even fitter than I am now. Plus, I'd have to eat well during the training period and get plenty of sleep and that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to doing a triathlon. I'd really like to do it sometime soon and I just hope I'll be successful at it. Have you always tried to do things that are healthy? Oh, yes. Well, probably. I think I've enjoyed doing sport and exercise since I was a child. And uh, I also try to eat well and get plenty of sleep. Yeah, so let's listen one more time. And our next task here, OK? Yeah, let's listen one more time. And our next task here is let's listen a to his introduction, what was his introduction to his answer? And how did he end his talk? And there's the last question that I'm gonna ask you is that um, the examiner asked a question. So what is that question, okay? I mean, why did the examiner ask um, after the talk, okay? Ask after the talk, okay? <clears throat> So if you if you hear the last part there, the examiner asked after the talk. So why did he ask? Why did he ask the examinee after the talk? Okay, uh, let's listen one more time and answer the second part, which is uh, intro. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's listen again. Uh, please take notes because I'm going to ask random, all right, uh, random names. And I want you to, uh, if your name is selected, I want you to answer one of the one of the four questions, okay? Yeah. Well, I'm quite fit because I do a range of sports like running and tennis. But um, I've always dreamed of taking part in a triathlon. I really like the idea of that. Um, a triathlon's a multi-sport event, but rather a hard one. It basically consists of swimming, cycling and running events, but you have to do them one after the other. You know, there are no breaks, so it would be quite a challenge. You can do various distances for each sport. There's an Olympic distance, which I wish I could do, but it would be too much for me. However, I think I'm likely to finish if I choose a shorter course. There's one that's, um, 
I think it involves a 750 meter swim, followed by 20 kilometers on the bike, and then a five kilometer run. As for when I take part in it, I'm not sure. Looking ahead, I don't expect I'll be able to tackle it until my academic year's ended. That means I'd be thinking in terms of maybe doing it in a year's time. That would be realistic because I'd need time to train and really get into shape. It's not something that I could do in a hurry. Um, obviously, it would be a really healthy thing to do because it would force me to get even fitter than I am now. Plus, I'd have to eat well during the training period and get plenty of sleep and that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to doing a triathlon. I'd really like to do it sometime soon and I just hope I'll be successful at it. Have you always tried to do things that are healthy? Oh, yes. Well, probably. <laughs> I think I've enjoyed doing sport and exercise since I was a child. And uh, I also try to eat well and get plenty of sleep. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, um, yeah, let's uh, spin the wheel. And uh, I think we have here... Um, who's this? Um, uh, Jill, okay. Jill has just arrived today. Uh, hi, Jill. How are you, Jill? How are you today? Hello. I just got back from our church. All Doing right. fine. Glad great. to be able to be part of this, even though I'm an hour late. Hello, uh, everyone. Yes, nice to meet you, Jill. All right. You hope you have a great Saturday, okay? Yeah. So, yes, um, I'm going to spin the wheel here. And then uh, once your name is called, I want you to answer one of the three questions there, okay? I hope you take down notes, all right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's spin the wheel. Yeah. So the first question here is this one. <clears throat> Uh, take note of his answer. So let's see if um, uh, you you have uh, taken down notes of the wind the the the, the window method, All right? <clears throat> okay, Catania. <clears throat> All right, are you there, Catania? Hello, sir. Yeah, you're there, right? You're there, right? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, okay. Um, okay. So let's start here. This one, okay. So can you tell me about uh, what he likes doing? Uh, who's uh, here? Uh, Danny is uh, Danny has just arrived. Okay, Danny, Daddy. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Danny. Can you hear me? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Hello. What? Yes. Can you hear yes. me? Right. Okay, very good. Okay, yeah, but Danny has just arrived, so anyway, you will be exempted from today's activity. Okay, Katania, um, uh, have you have you uh taken down notes? Yes. 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 yes right. Very good. That's lovely. Okay. okay. For first question, it's about what he likes to do. Yeah, um, what he likes so to do. He would like to do, uh, triathlon. Right, a triathlon. Right. Yeah. yeah. And what does it yes. involve? Have you heard? What, yeah. Mm. So what does it involve? Oh, should I answer the next one, sir? Sorry? Uh, should I answer the second window? Uh, yeah, the, the second, third, and fourth. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it uh, involves, um, according to him, it involves swimming, cycling, and running. Right, right. The most important event consists of swimming, cycling, running, and some distances, all right? And when does yes. he like doing it? Uh, he would like to do it after his academic year. Yes, after academic year time. Yeah, he's not sure, but yeah. after year time, academic year time. And why is it good for his health? Um, he said that it will actually, he wants to do it because it will force him to be healthier than he is now. Right, very good. Force him to be healthier than he is now. Very good. That's nice. That's lovely. Thanks, Katania. That's good. Now let's hear from yeah. Thank you. That that's she was great. Okay. 
Let's hear from this one. Um, listen again. Uh, what was his introduction and the ending of this talk? All right. So I'm gonna spin the wheel, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna ask you to answer me this second question. Okay. So again, <clears throat> um, uh, speaking part two has introduction, all right, or opening of the talk. So, what was his opening? If you uh, if you if you uh, if you hear, heard that, then the contents. Okay, that means the window method or the note taking, and then the conclusion, all right, or the ending of the talk, all right. Okay, so I want you to once your name is fixed, I want you to tell me what was what his introduction was and how he ended his talk. Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay, let's spin the wheel we have here. Uh, Danny and uh, Jill has just arrived. Catania's name has been called. Okay, so let's just okay. <clears throat> okay. 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 Yay, Mary, you're there. Yes. Yes. So, Mary, have you heard his opening or the opening of his talk? Oh yeah, <laughs> to be yeah. honest, I mean, at first, uh, I think I didn't understand uh, uh -huh. the introduction, mm -hmm. but, um, I mean, at the end of uh, I mean, the audio, so mm -hmm. it talks about, um, one moment. Mm -hmm. So the the, I mean, uh, yeah, the the last part. The ending is, is you, yeah, 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 yeah. Did, yeah, did, did you get the ending? If you didn't get the introduction, did you get the ending? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> did. Okay, yeah. very good. So, so how I did think, he end the talk? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, um, he finished, uh, I mean, uh, his talk about, um, uh, about, yeah. So, uh, he finished it by, um, saying that, um, how often, uh, he do, um, exercise something like that yeah. okay okay right <laughs> no problem no problem yes no problem okay so uh you can practice it on your own okay when you do the speaking uh -huh. on your own again okay? but okay, okay. Uh, let me replay <laughs> the first part okay and i will send you in detail about his um introduction again okay? this is his introduction this one well i'm quite fit because i do a range of sports like running and tennis but um i've always dreamed of taking part in a triathlon that's it okay so uh first of all he said that well i'm quite fit because i've been, ta I've been oh, taking quite a... fit, yeah. yes that's it okay so he said like well i'm quite fit i've been taking a range of sports okay so he's quite fit because he's been taking a range of sports but there's always this one thing that he, he, he likes doing in the future, and that is a triathlon. That's it, okay? So when you speak naturally, uh, you can just give a short introduction, so any topic, okay? So just a, give a, like, a phrase of introduction before your notes, okay? And for the last one, he ended his talk with this one, okay? For the last one, okay? For the ending, this one. And I just hope I'll be successful well during the training period mm -hmm. and get plenty of sleep and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to doing a triathlon. That's I it, okay? So, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to doing a triathlon, okay? So, it's like ending, okay? So, here's how we end the talk, okay? Let me, um, uh, some examples, okay? For ending the talk, all right? <clears throat> Very uh, simple. So when we end a talk, okay, um, ending a talk, you can say very naturally, you can say, um, yeah or yes, I'm actually, for example, yes, like looking forward to doing this, if it's an event, okay, looking forward to doing this again, all right. And you can also say, um, in all, all right, in all, all right. In all, okay. And if uh, if it was an experience, you can say it was a worthwhile experience, all right. That's it. <clears throat> and you can say overall, right? Overall, and then give your generalizations, or I would say, um. So by the way, guys, when you end your talk, there's um. 
there are three possible ways, okay? Please take down notes, okay? Yeah, because this is really helpful for you and for your students as well. Now, there, there are three possible ways to end your talk, okay? First way, okay, number one. <clears throat> so the first way is to give generalization, okay? Generalization, it means like, uh, for example, yes, it was a worthwhile experience. Uh, overall, yes, um, overall, um, that experience was the most exciting experience I've had, okay, my entire life, for example, okay? That's generalization. Number two, we have your suggestion, all right? Um, suggestion that, that doesn't mean that uh, suggestion or uh, recommendation, all right? So, for example, you would say, uh, yeah, um, that sport was, uh, to me, is a really healthy, uh, healthy sport that I have to do in the future, and I'd love to... I'd love to recommend this to um to my friends and to people I, I I know, okay? Something like that. Okay, so you give suggestion or recommendation. Or you would say, well, yeah, this this sport is not only interesting but also healthy. So um this is very this is worth um uh, this is very commendable or this is worth recommending, for example. Okay. And the last way or last possible way to end your talk is to give a prediction okay yeah or prediction i just make it simple okay so we have here generalization number one the, the easiest one and second one is you recommend you you recommend if for example if you go if you talk about the place you would say yeah so that that place was um was very spectacular and if um and i would recommend that to any of my foreign friends to visit this um, beautiful place in, for example, in Palawan or whatever is that, okay? Then prediction, uh, we just like the guy's answer here, looking forward to, he, he's predicting, all right? So, well, I'm looking forward to doing this event. Well, um, I'm excited to, uh, to having this event in the future. So basically prediction is about um, like the future, okay? <clears throat> That's it. Or if you talk about the place, you would say, yeah, this this travel experience was a worthwhile experience and I'd love to do it again, okay, in the future. That's it, okay? <clears throat> do it again in the future, all right? So it's like, um, um, like predicting you want to do it again in the future, probably with your friends, with family, or alone, whatever is like you want to do it, um, from today, okay, or any time from today, all right? That's it, so again, there are three possible ways of ending your talk. One is generalization, one is, second one is recommendation, and the other one is prediction, okay? Yeah, that's it, that's it, okay? And then you can start with in all, overall, and you can say, and very naturally you can say, yes, um, um, for example, if it's a thing, so yes, uh, that thing that I got from, my, that present that I got from my, my mom, which is a smartphone, was really useful to me, and um, and uh, I would uh, recommend one of these uh, phone to um, maybe my my, my 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 child in the future. Okay, yeah, that's it. So we have here three possible ways to end in your talk. Let's remember this one. Okay, that's nice. And last question that we have to answer today is this one: Why did the examiner ask after the talk? So let's hear from. Um, uh, okay, let's hear from Eileen. Eileen is there? Okay, is Eileen there? So if you, if you notice, after the examinee ended his talk, okay, he's, he... In, well, in, leap and that sort of talk, thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to doing a triathlon. I'd really like to do it sometime soon, and I just hope I'll be successful at it. Have you always tried to do things that are healthy? Oh, yes. Yes. So the last part there, after he finished his talk, right? so that means the end of his talk, the examiner asked the question. Yeah. Eileen, did you... Uh, yeah, are you there? Uh, someone asked for me permission to do this. Ah, that's Eileen. How about Jovi? Yeah, Jovi, did you can can you give us the answer? Yeah, can you give us the answer why the examiner? I mean, what is the purpose of asking the question? Yep, here. 
Or why did All the examiner right. ask after the talk? Yeah. Okay, so I think the examiner asked to confirm if he is doing it for a long time or just recently. Right, okay, that's it, okay? So it's like, uh, in other words, yeah. <clears throat> sure, 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 yeah. Uh, in other words, um, in IELTS speaking part two, after you finish the talk, there is always a follow-up question, okay? And whenever you give your students uh, or your student, uh, for example, um, uh, a task, okay? So you always ask a follow-up question, okay? So, okay, ask a follow-up question, that's it. Only one follow-up question, okay? Mm, before you move on to IELTS speaking part three, okay? So after you, after follow-up question, it's okay? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Jovi has a baby. Is that your son, Jovi? Sorry? Is that your son? Yeah. Um, actually, she's my daughter. Uh, uh, your, your daughter. How old is your daughter, Jovi? Um, three months old. Three months old. Wow, that's lovely. Okay. That's uh, the most tiring uh, stage <laughs> of a parent. Yes. Yeah, uh, indeed. Yes, I've been there twice. <laughs> <laughs> so the most tiring stage of a parent is from three or from zero to two. Yes. Yeah, to three. Yeah, that's it. So ask a follow-up question, okay? And before you move on to IELTS speaking part three, okay? That's it, okay? That's very clear. Now, that's for the, um, again, IELTS speaking part two, there is opening content and um, what is that? Uh, ending of your talk, all right? <clears throat> now, let's deal with other types of questions in IELTS uh, speaking, okay? We have here events, all right? No. Now, for events, there are questions that ask um, ask a logical order, okay? And some questions don't. For example, here, um, this question here, this is a type of question that talks about future events, but it doesn't ask about the logical order, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> However, in this type of questionnaire for events, which I need you to pay attention to, because there are events that talks about, that ask you about the, the, uh, the what is that, the logic, okay? Or the, the uh, logical order, okay? Or a st stages of a story, okay? all right? So some questions in events, all right, ask you about the logical order or stages in a story. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Some, okay, and some don't, all right? So as you can see, uh, in the last exercise, uh, we listened about the guy who um, asked about the event that he's going to do in the future. And it doesn't ask about the stages in a story, okay? However, some questions ask you about the stages in a story. And, and again, the introducing a stage of a story is very useful. Okay, at any, what is that? At any questions that ask about stages in a story. Okay, any questions that ask about the stages in a story. Okay, so we have here questions like uh, stages like a couple of years ago, eventually, uh, the next thing we did before. Okay, so we have here a um, couple of years ago, eventually, next thing, before, at that time, as soon as, and one morning, one afternoon, and so on and so forth, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> That's it. And then you have to uh, give reasons and explanations, all right? Let me, uh, I'd like you to listen to this one, okay? Yeah, just listen. Okay? And we, we're going to, again, uh, listen to these stages of the story, how the uh, speaker organized his story, all right? How he organized his, let's listen to this one. Uh, there is no activity here. All we need to do is just to listen to his answer, okay? Yeah. A couple of years ago, I went on holiday with a friend to Windsor. Um, the reason why we chose Windsor is that I've got an aunt who lives there. She's been living there for 20 years now. And, well, I've always enjoyed traveling. I always wanted to go to the UK. At the time, my friend and I had just finished our exams at school and we were waiting to go to university. It was a summer break and she invited us to visit her, so we decided to go. 
Before we went, we hired a car, which we picked up when we reached the airport. I remember it was a bright green Mini. We drove it straight to my aunt's house in Windsor and left it outside for a day or two. This was because she lived in the center of town, and most places, like Windsor Castle, were easy to reach on foot. However, one morning we took a trip to a gallery. There was an art exhibition that I wanted to see, so we set off, but after half an hour, bang, we had a flat tire. Now, unfortunately, neither of us knew how to change a tire. So the next thing we did was to call the emergency services and explain the situation. Well, I speak fairly good English, but I didn't know how to say tire. And I was on the phone, so that made it worse. I just had to keep saying, we've got a problem with the wheel. And during all this, my friend was making hand signals at me, and eventually I just said, uh, flat. Well, it was amazing. As soon as I said that word, she went, oh, right, I understand. Twenty minutes later, a recovery van arrived and fixed our flat tire with no charge. So, what have I learned from this experience? <laughs> I mean, it was a difficult situation, but ever since then, I've known that a flat in English means a flat tire. Okay. Now, here's the thing that I'd like you to remember, okay? When... Uh, we have learned in our previous training, right, that in IELTS speaking, you'll be asked about uh, people, places, things, and events, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, part one, part two, and whatever part that is speaking, okay? So we have here um, <clears throat> people, place, things, or event. Now, now, for the events, okay? For the events, all right? So some of the questions about events, number one, it asks you about um, the stage of the story. And you have to identify if that question, all right, ask you about the stage of the story. So you would know, or your students would know, if they have to use the sequence of events, okay? Uh, the sequence of events we have there eventually, the last thing we did before that, and then after that, so okay, a couple of months ago, etc. Now, some of the questions about events doesn't ask you about stages of the story, okay? Yeah, it just tell you about, it's just merely a description, okay? Description of a certain, um, um, like, event, okay? Just, just describe, okay? So if, if you say description, that means it just talk about the place and the people there in the event, but it doesn't talk about the stages, okay? So we have to um, consider these two things, okay? When, when uh, what is that? Um, being asked about questions related to uh, events, okay? Now for things, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> yeah. And this is about things, and I think we have learned this a while ago, yeah. Uh, we have learned this today, that for things and buildings, we just have to use here the OSAS comp, all right? Opinion, size, age, shape, color, material, and purpose, all right? To describe or to, to expound further, okay? <clears throat> Okay. Now, before you uh, practice your IELTS speaking part two, let's uh, do first um, mm -hmm. IELTS speaking part three. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for IELTS speaking part three, let's re let's have a re let's have a recap of what we've learned last meeting. So the the method here, okay, of this two way discussion is a PRE, which means which stands for the P stands for paraphrase, R stands for reason. E stands for explain, and another E there stands for example, okay? <clears throat> so this is the last part of IELTS speaking. Now, as you notice that the examiner asks a follow-up question, and after a follow-up question, we, we move on to IELTS speaking, and you would say, okay, let's move on to IELTS speaking, uh, let's move on to speaking part three, and let's talk about, uh, let's talk about, for example, traveling, okay? Yeah, now, when giving reasons, this is what I always want to tell my students, okay? When giving reasons. <clears throat> yeah, when giving reasons, we also use here um, adjective and noun, all right? Adjective plus noun, all right? For example, and I think we have learned this last meeting, we can say main reason. We can say most important factor, most important Two adjectives, okay? Yeah. And then uh, most important. 
adjective noun. <clears throat> So this is how we emphasize our reason. Okay, oops. So we have here a most important, for example, uh, factor. Then we have here, uh, for example, uh, <clears throat> a key advantage, again. Um, um, significant advantage. Yeah. Yeah. That's it again. <clears throat> Key role, all right. Or you can say key role or key purpose, okay, <clears throat> and so on. <clears throat> so we're giving reasons here, as you can see, all right. Uh, we have to uh, use adjective and noun. So as you can see, we have your main reason, all right. Uh, obvious example, obvious reason, most obvious reason is, all right most obvious reason so most important factor and then we have your most obvious reason most um <clears throat> costs okay most obvious cause for example the most obvious cause of traffic jam is the constant increase on the number of cars running on roads for example okay most obvious cause, all right? <clears throat> and um, yeah, we can say most obvious cause or most obvious effect, for example. Like this, all right? <clears throat> okay, that's it. So here's an example for IELTS speaking part three. So we have here a paraphrase, reason, explain, and example, okay? Mm. Here, let's have an example here, uh, this one. So paraphrase, we have here think, uh, believe is the synonym for think. Uh, men, women is a synonym for people, all right? And have similar perspectives. Perspective is a synonym for view. Right. And technology are useful devices that synonym for technology. Okay. And then we have your reason. This is because the main purpose, the main purpose, this adjective and noun. All right. So main purpose of technology is to make our lives better and more comfortable. Explain that. So both men and women accept this main function. So main function, adjective noun of any tech devices. Then for example, Men want devices that aid them in home fixtures, while women want devices that help them in doing house chores, but with the same purpose, that is to reduce their effort at work. So again, the example that we're giving here is, as we have, um, as we have um, uh, learned today, is we're going to give here um, generally observed, okay? Generally observed examples. Okay, that's it. <clears throat> okay. So we have some more examples here. For example, uh, do, young do young people use cell phones the same way old people do? So from my perspective, giving opinion, I believe that young people do not really use the same way as older generations, older people and older generations. And then we have you explain, this is because the phones today are pretty much different from the phones that the older generations used to have, all right? And then explain this one, today's smartphones have many different features as compared to the phones in the past. Hence, younger people have a lot to explore in their smartphones. However, the older generations have their phones used only for calling or texting. That is why many of them do not really explore the applications on the smartphone. So again, it follows here the paraphrase, reason, explain, and example, okay? Paraphrase, reason, explain, and example, okay? Now let's move on to our next exercise here. We're done with the speaking, all right? So as we have uh, introduced this, this afternoon, that after we master the contents of speaking, we have uh, speaking exercises, all right? 
Yeah, IELTS speaking exercises, all right? So let's start first with IELTS speaking part one, okay? <clears throat> so for IELTS speaking part one, I'm gonna choose here, um, oh, no, part two, okay? Part two, let's just do speaking part two, all right? And then part two and part three, I think part one is, uh, I think, uh, very manageable. So let's start IELTS speaking part two, okay? And your task for IELTS speaking part two is this one. This one, okay. And the question. Uh, this one. <clears throat> Practice two. Okay. Okay. Here. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's have an IELTS speaking part two practice, and after this uh, activity, uh, we have also part three, and after part three, we'll have a demo demo teaching for listening and reading. Okay. Yeah. So for our speaking part two, um, I'd like you to take down notes of this um, of, of, from the cue card here. The question here is describe your ideal healthy living environment. Okay. Now you should say where it would be, uh, what features it would have, how easy it would be to live there, and explain why this would be your ideal environment. Okay. Now let me guide you uh, in answering this question. Okay. Again, I'm gonna choose only uh, three from 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 out of nine. Okay, uh, participants only three. I'll spin the wheel, so all of you must prepare. All right, uh, you should prepare because uh, your name might be selected. Okay, so first of all, uh, first of all, we have here where it would be. Okay, so we have discussed earlier, right? about the places, okay? The um, exact location of the places. We have, uh, for example, the city center, suburban area, outskirts, or right, countryside. And then we have here areas, uh, industrial, commercial, agricultural, etc. Then we have your language of location, yeah? Okay. And um, yeah, language of location, <clears throat> that's it. So for where, all right? So that means, you wouldn't just say, for example, um, I, I believe that the perfect place that I want to live in the future would be um, a cottage, okay, just by the, a cottage just by the, just by the lake, by the quiet and peaceful lake, for example, okay, yeah, and then you give, you give your reasons why, okay, or for, for example, you would say a small flat, okay, um, located just at the middle of the city center. Okay, a small flat, all right? <clears throat> then the next one here is uh, what features would it have? So features, all right? Now for features here, uh, hmm. so the features here, these are the, uh, uh, for example, the, the facilities, okay? Yep, so you have to describe. Now here, you have to use your adjective plus noun. I, I told you before that the most powerful here in IELTS speaking, in all IELTS speaking, is the use of the effective use of adjective plus noun. Okay. <clears throat> Facilities, we have your uh, uh, amenities, all right. Um, that's it. Um, and then last one, the third one, which is how easy is it to live there? So for the for easy, it should be access, okay? So for easy, this should be, uh, this should be um, access to the basic needs, okay? So access to the basic needs. So what is basic needs? Food, shelter, clothing, okay? That's basic needs, okay? Then access to the um, uh, main road, for example. Yeah, main roads and highways, access to entertainment, Shops, okay. Um, entertainment. Um, what is that? Shops. Um, business or work. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. That's for easy. How easy is it to leave there? And for the last question, for the last task is, um, why is it perfect environment for you? All right. So for the why, all right. Uh, why a perfect environment? For the why, it could be the uh, how can it benefit you? So think of its benefits, all right? Um, for example, if, if, if you think you can get a job there, is it uh, to improve your career? All right, is it to improve your health? Okay. Um, what is that? Is it, to, uh, is it to meet your needs, all right? Um, what else? Uh, does it match? Does it match? your does that environment match your personality for example yeah so if you are if you are a person who loves a um if you are um, ambivert i think there is a, a a word ambivert yeah it means a person who is both introvert and extrovert and and uh who wants to spend 50 50 alone 50 percent maybe alone and 50 percent with friends that's ambivert i think okay so if you're an ambivert uh, most of the uh, half of your time you want to spend alone and half of your time you want to spend with friends, okay? And that place is just perfect for you when you want to be alone, when you want to be in solitude, okay? <clears throat> All right, so again, uh, does it match your personality? All right, or uh, does it match your needs, your career, your health, etc.? So you have to expound, okay? Next thing you need to do, okay? Uh, if your name has been chosen. After you take down notes of these things, where it would be, so you, you have to be very specific with the location, all right? Areas, um, the language of location, the features. Then, when you begin talking, uh, you have to have a brief introduction or opening, okay? So your opening could be an introduction of your, maybe a personality, okay? Could be, okay? Because this is about your, your perfect environment, okay? Or it could be about introduction of your career, okay? So for example, you would say that, um, well, um, well, right now I'm, I'm, I'm currently living at a, a busy, uh, busy city center, but I think the, the perfect environment for me would be something that matches my personality. And that should be in a, a small, quiet village, okay? For example, okay? Then that, that could be your opening, okay? Then you're, after your opening, you have to give your con contents of your um, speech, which is found from the cue card. And lastly, you have to end your talk, okay? So for ending, you could say, uh, again, we have learned about the three possible ways of ending your talk. So we have your generalization, um, prediction, and recommendation, all right? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to give you enough time to prepare. And uh, I really love to take down notes. Again, I'm gonna call here random names, three random names from this group, all right? And I'll give you enough time, around three minutes to prepare. And after three minutes, uh, yes, um, you will give your answer to the class, okay? Or to the group, all right? Uh, let's say four minutes, all right? Yeah. And I want you to use everything you have learned today. Right, and in from the past meeting about how to um, um, master the contents in IELTS speaking part two. Um, excuse me, sir. Can I take a yeah. look with a question? I'm sorry, I was not able to. Ah, sure, no problem. Jovi is here. This one, and I will send the notes to uh, our group chat. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Okay, I'll give you uh, two more minutes to recap your answer. And after that, we're going to start calling, okay? Um, lucky winners, sorry. <clears throat>
Okay, so um, yeah, are we ready? <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, spin the wheel again. Yeah, spin the wheel, spin the wheel. All right, so Mary, are you ready, Mary? Oh, not yet. Sorry. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Right, right, right. No, no, no problem. Okay. Uh, you will have better. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you two more minutes. Okay, last two minutes. Uh, everyone, this, this should be for everyone. Okay. Again, not, only, not only for Mary. Okay, for everyone. All right, because your name will be selected. Okay. Yeah, for everyone. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, let's hear from Jill. Okay, Jill. Okay, next is Mary. I I like volunteer. We have volunteer here, Jill. Okay, Jill. Uh, can you? Uh... I am okay, currently. You... Oh, oh we, sorry. You, yes. You will have you will have one to two minutes to talk about this topic. All right. All so right. you you may start speaking now. I am currently living in a village where it's fairly quiet and simple. I believe a perfect, healthy living environment would be just like the place where I live now. It's a simple village with small clusters of houses near an agricultural area, but it has shops and facilities that can cater to our needs like a stores, a restaurants, a school, a clinic, and there's a small police outpost. It is mm. only 10 minutes away from town. Right. Also, the air here is clean and it's mostly quiet by eight o'clock in the evening. I believe the local village officers enforce some basic ordinances, which makes the place ideal mm. for someone who, uh, for someone like me who prefers peace and quiet. In the future, when I retire, I'd like to live in a place exactly like this one. Mm -hmm. a peaceful, quiet, and clean, but not too far away from the bustling town. But also, oh, I think I deleted the last part. Yes. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, that's it. <laughs> okay, that, yeah, thank you so much, Jill. All right, there's one thing I need you to, uh, I need you to, uh uh to, to add which is your ending of your talk okay yeah so yeah that is very good that's nice okay so you have reached more than a minute and uh, you have a clear adjectives and a clear description of the place that you you would like to live as your ideal healthy living environment okay very good that's nice any volunteer okay okay no any volunteers here all right so mary you're done mary Yeah, Mary, you finished, right? Yes. Uh, okay, we have Danny. Danny, you're next, okay? Yes, and I, I would like to hear from Mary first, okay? So, Mary, you'll have one to two minutes to talk about this topic, okay? Mary, can you start? Oh, sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, I can say that um, I am an introvert person, and I love to spend my time with myself. Mm -hmm. So, I believe I can do, I can, uh, I can, uh, 
focus more if I am alone. So, mm -hmm. uh, if I uh, I want to live in Port, Port of Princess of Palawan, so it is located in the eastern shore of Palawan Island. So, it is known for its stunning natural beauty, um, including some beaches, uh, crystal clear water. water. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that it is easy to live there because it is accessible to some places such mm -hmm. as um, shopping center, school, hospital, as well as uh, my church. Mm. And um, since I am working from home, so I love to see some beautiful uh, beaches and ama amazing scenery. So I think it would really help me uh, to refresh my mind and uh, relieve some stress if right. ever yeah. <laughs> that I encounter some challenges in at my work. Yeah. Right. Okay, okay, that's nice. Okay, that's more than a minute. Okay, thank you so much, Mary. Okay, let's hear from Danny. Okay, uh, Mary, by the way, you have a clear introduction, you have a clear content, and you, there's also an ending there of your talk, right? That's good. Danny, here's a, we have a volunteer. Danny, you have, are you ready? Hello, Joe. Hello, everyone. Yes. Okay, <laughs> yes, so you I have, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, you have one to two minutes to talk about this topic, right? Can you start, Danny? All right, thank you. Right. So, this is for me. As a hardworking individual and a person who gets sick, who gets sick easily, a peaceful and quiet environment is what I am aiming for. So if I would be given a chance to choose a place where I can live, I would like to live in the countryside wherein I would be surrounded by mountains and sea. I would build a small bungalow, bungalow house to be with my dogs. Also, I'll make sure that I can be able to communicate with my neighbors so that um, there will be no language barrier. The most important facility that I would like to have is a place where I can exercise and be able to play with my dogs. Mm -hmm. It should also be a place where I can have an easy access to my workplace, which is a school, hospital for my health, and a mall where I can buy all my needs. The yeah. morning sea breeze would be a great help to my health and my overall welfare. So overall, in the near future, I would like to make the dream of mine come true. Right, very good. That's nice. Okay, uh, there's a really there's a clear uh, there's a clear ending of your talk there, Danny, and a clear uh, introduction too. So for the ending, you you use your overall. That's great. You can say in all, and uh, you can also say yes, um, yeah, overall in all, and um, looking forward to etc. That's good. Any volunteer? Um, before we move on to uh, speaking part three, uh, no volunteer. Okay, let's just. Yeah, no, well, let's move on to speaking part three. All right, that's good, that's good. I like volunteers actually. Yeah, I need to choose, okay? So let's move on to IELTS speaking part three. And these are the questions here. And from the questions, uh, let's see, there are 10 questions in total. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So there are 10 questions in total, and what you need to do is I'd like you to choose only three out of 10, okay? So three out of 10, all right? So there are, um, the first thing we need to do again is we need to think of a possible synonyms, all right? So here I'm, I'm, going, to under, I'm going to underline, all right, here. So you can think of the possible synonyms for impacts and cell phones, okay? So impacts. Uh, maybe effects, okay, or cell phones. You have mobile phones, all right. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm not going to uh, tell you which is which which part or words you need to uh, find a synonym, all right. But I think you know you, you know where, all right. So for example, we have your impacts, okay, impacts, effect, mobile phones, um, um, uh, loudly, for example. So very loud is deafening, all right. So that's it. Um, mobile phones, opinion, thought, idea, all right? Selfie, you can say, for example, taking photos of oneself, all right? So again, when you give your answer, um, please do not um, use exactly the same words, all the same words in the question, okay? So you have to, uh, you have to replace, okay? Some words into synonyms or at least change their function, okay? Yeah, for example, the word important, you can say the importance of, I believe, okay? <clears throat> I believe that the importance of, all right? 
So instead of using the word important, you change that word function into a noun, okay? So we have importance, all right? <clears throat> Etc. okay? So again, I want you to, to choose your three questions out of 10, all right? So choose three out of 10. And I'd like you to use your, the method of discussion of speaking part three, which is which starts with the paraphrase, and then followed by uh, your reason, the R, okay, the reason on your points. Then uh, af after that is followed by an explanation, okay, and uh, lastly is your example. And again, for your example, it must be generally observed facts, okay, or situations all right that's it okay <clears throat> now since this is a practice i'm going to give you uh, enough time around three four or five minutes to get to prepare and you can do volunteer okay if, if, if you can do volunteer i need i need a i need a, a three okay um out of eight but again um uh if you can volunteer please volunteer all right and this is this is a time for you to uh like I, I want to check if we have like um, use like the things you've learned from mastering IELTS speaking. Okay, I give you enough time around four or five minutes, and after that, I'm gonna call random names, and once your name is uh, selected, so you have to tell me which of these questions that you have you have uh, you prepare. Okay. Yeah, three questions again. Okay. Again, um, choose three out of uh, 10 questions, okay? First task, okay? And then... Use the three REE method. And then lastly is um uh, use adjectives always use adjective plus noun okay if necessary yeah. or um, Can use adjective plus noun or adverb adjective. It's also useful here. Yeah.
Okay, so let's uh, okay, so let's uh, pick some names here. All right. Okay. Close. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, spin the wheel again. You only have to choose here three questions out of 10, okay? And then we're going to use here uh, PRE method. And uh, we, again, as we answer, we're going to use your adjective and noun or adverb um, adverb adjectives. Uh, what I have introduced about this adverb adjective, but I think it's also very useful. For example, <clears throat> for example, you would say, um, uh, for example, it's extremely, extremely important, okay? Yeah. Or extremely useful. Yeah. So extremely there is a, is an adverb, all right? And adjective there is important, okay? So adverb, yeah, you can add that with um, adjective, okay? Oh, uh, for example, highly, uh, for example, um, highly recommend, um, highly, highly social, for example, highly social beings, right? <clears throat> or very advantageous, for example. Very is an adverb, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's spin the wheel. Okay. There you go. Mary, I think is the most favorite. Um, most oh, favorite you know what? <laughs> most favorite I'm not teacher yet. here. Are you finished? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm not yet. Done, no, so no problem. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we can call another one again. Okay? <laughs> I think Mary is the most favorite teacher here in this site. Okay. Yes. Congratulations, Mary. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's uh, shuffle. And yeah, that's here. Yes, Eileen. Yes, Eileen. Uh, you finished? Not yet, sir. I'm still on the first question. <laughs> uh, no problem. Okay, uh, I'm gonna give you another two more minutes. Okay, let's let's reshuffle. Let's uh let's uh put again the names of Mary and Eileen here. Okay, and I'll give you two more minutes. All right, uh, two more minutes, and after after two minutes more, we're going to. Answer what are the questions you've chosen, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> So again, any any questions from any of these topics? So for example, you choose one question here from topic mobile phones and two questions here. Or maybe you can choose three questions here. That's no problem. Or three here. Or you can choose uh, two from here and one from here. Okay. So up to you, right?
Yeah, if you have any questions about synonyms, you can ask me. Okay, I'm 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 jotting down notes here about some of the possible synonyms from the questions. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so we have I have here some possible synonyms, sorry. Impacts, effects, cell phones, mobile phones, think, believe, opinion, same way, similar, selfie, taking a photo of oneself, important, essential, necessary, or vital, view, see or use, spend, use, yes, latest, modern. Uh we have here help, assist, aid, effect, results, employment, work. Okay. Any volunteer? No volunteer. Uh, here, um, if your name is uh, chosen, you all, you own you you have to answer one question first. Okay? One question at a time, and then I'm gonna spin another name, and then just answer. Try to answer one question first. Okay. Yeah. One out of three. Right? Um. Hello, sir. Can I yeah. can I try to answer number five because be before my baby cries. <laughs> ah, sure. Are you ah uh, yes, Jill. Okay. Okay, Jill. All right. Yeah. I would like to. Oh, sorry. So what technology or equipment, right, is used in most right. workplaces? Yeah. Um, I would like to answer number five. How important are cell phones to people? Yes. Um, yeah. I believe cell phone becomes one of the basic needs of people nowadays because it has a variety of usage. Mm -hmm. Um, for other people, they can use it to make money in their specific jobs. Um, take vloggers and as as an example, mm -hmm. they make use of their phone to make nice video or to take nice videos to mm -hmm. upload online and make money from it so mm -hmm. it becomes the source it becomes one of the reasons why they get money mm -hmm. from 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 their from other people or yeah mm -hmm. and also uh for an online teacher it also it it is a means to communicate um my my clients my students and i can also make money from it so i think it has a variety of usage it depends on your purpose mm, right that's it okay any volunteer no volunteer okay? i volunteer <laughs> ah jill okay jill which question you you want to answer jill yeah that's good mm, yeah, didn't you ask us to answer three questions i prepared yeah, all yeah, three uh, so yeah, yeah, three questions. Yeah. So, which one is okay. the first question you'd like to answer? Okay. The first um, question is from topic one. The the second what? question. All right. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So, what is the uh, impact of what, cell phones? Yeah. Um. A que it's question number two. Sorry. Uh, number topic two. one. Question number two. Okay. So, what do you think of people who speak loudly on cell phone in public places? For me, individuals who talk noisily in open areas are rude and inconsiderate. One of the most significant things my parents taught me is to be mindful of others, especially in the public. For instance, when commuting among individuals who are probably tired after a day's work, uh, one has to take heed not to disturb others by being noisy or distracting, especially when one is talking over the phone right. uh, these individuals might just want to have an uneventful commute mm, right. that's it and question next question you answer you prepare three questions right yes um oh, question what? oh yeah question number one from topic one uh, so what is the impact of cell phones communication devices like mobile phones have influenced every aspect of our lives and due to this influence, the desire to stay, stay connected all the time has become a significant need. That's mm -hmm. why everyone, even children and old people, have mobile phones. Mm -hmm. The kids in my church, for example, have cell phones, which I think is unwise. They should be playing outside their houses instead of staring at their phones, watching YouTube videos over and over again. Mm -hmm. That's it. Well, and the last question? Question from topic two. Uh, then question number three. Number three. So does technology help workers or make their life more difficult? 
employed individuals have definitely benefited from advanced mechanisms. Their jobs are easier, faster, and have higher quality. However, there's a danger for the workforce to forget being resourceful when bereft of computers or the internet. And for this reason, I believe technology has both its pros and cons. In my workplace, for example, uh, recently, people have trouble submitting works on time when there's an internet problem. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's oh, good. No, Thanks. Thanks, Jill. <laughs> so, Mary, your turn. So, which questions yeah. have you chosen, Mary? So, uh, one moment. Uh, about the important of um, cell phone. I mean, mobile phone. Ah, uh, this was... one. Number two. Which number? Ah, uh, one moment. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. How okay. important are cell phones? Num number number five. five. Okay. So, how important are cell phones to people? Yeah. So mm. my answer is I believe that cell phones are important to people because it is portable, portable and accessible in many ways. Mm -hmm. So using our mobile phone, it helps us to connect with our friends and family. So, like mm -hmm. for example, uh, we can send them uh, messages or maybe use um social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn to connect with other people. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, uh, we can also look for a job using our um cell phones. So mm -hmm. overall, it is very useful for us to have our mobile phone as always. Right. Again, is, did you answer the second question? Second and third? Um. Yeah. 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 Uh, which, so which on one? the second one. Uh huh. Topic um, two. That would be like, uh, do yeah, number three, uh, topic three, one. Uh, topic one, number three, yes, okay, yeah, and yeah. So, do young people use cell phones the same way old people do? So, yeah, so my answer is, um, I think you uh, use mobile phone in different ways than old people do. So, as we all know, that children love to use um, cell phone to watch um, some TikTok. TikTok pages, mm -hmm. and I believe they love to use it for playing games. So, like for example, my nephew, so he always uh borrow uh his mom's mm -hmm. um his mom uh cell phone just to play some video games, and I think it made him um addicted uh playing some online games. Mm -hmm. Right. That's okay. All. That's yeah. it. That's good. Any volunteer? And then, the last yeah. one. Last one. Last one. Last one. Yeah. 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 The so last question. The last one is um I mean uh number four topic number four same topic topic number one right? no um topic two topic two number. okay so what effect does modern technology on employment yeah so um the outcome of technological advancement on employment is it uh really help the employees to look for a job in easiest way so mm. imagine um having a lot or computer and internet mm. connection so in just one click uh, you mm. can look for a job online and you can use different social media sites um, mm. such as LinkedIn, Upwork, online job, job street that will help you to save more time in uh, looking for a job. So overall the modern technology uh, makes our life easier in having a job with the comfort mm. of our house. Our homes, yes. Very good. That's nice. Okay. Any volunteer? Yeah. So we have a uh... Uh, what is that? Um, Jovi answered one question. Um, yeah, I'm gonna spin the wheel. Okay, yeah. Uh, who else is finished? Um, uh, here maybe we have volunteer here. One message. Yes, Danny. Okay, I love that. Okay. <laughs> okay, Danny. Which question you've chosen, Danny? Yeah. Hello again. Yes. Um, I don't know if this is correct, but that's it. Uh, let me try. That's okay. So uh, by my, the way, which question? Yeah, in topic. Um, technology number one. Technology, okay. Number one. Okay. So, do you think men and women view technology you, differently? differently? Right, right, right. Okay. So, so my, answer, the question? Yeah. <clears throat> my answer is generally both genders use machine contrarily because they both use electronics dissimilarly. As you can see, Men use technology as a vital role in their work and uh, in general as a whole, while women use technology just for the sake of being in the trend. For example, for example mm -hmm. men usually dominated tech companies while women doesn't involve much. Much, right. Very good. That's nice. Yeah. That's good. It's and a generally another... observed example. Good. Which one is next question? Yeah, which okay, one? Number two, technology. Number two, technology. Okay. So why do you think people spend so much money buying the latest devices 
technology. So people use modern devices mainly because they want to join the latest trend. As a matter of course, they are not even looking at the price and buying gadgets. In my case, I bought a high-end laptop because in my work, we needed a gadget that can cope up with the programs that is being used. Right. And last question yeah. you've chosen? I only chose to go. Two. Yeah, no problem. Yes, no problem. Okay, that's 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 good. Okay, that's really good. That's amazing. Okay. Now, uh, let's have a very quick recap of IELTS speaking. Okay, I think you have fully uh, learned everything that we have had here for our training. And I really appreciate that uh, how fast you can... Uh, Accumulate all, okay? So anyway, for IELTS speaking, we, let's go back to criteria, all right? First is FC again. That means uh, fluency and coherence. That is the logic of your answer. So there's a the logic in answering part one, part two, and part three, and we have finished and covered all these. We have the lexical resource, and as I've said, as we have continuously uh, mentioned that the most uh, useful tool is the use of adjective adverb or adverb adjectives, okay? That's for lexical resource. And then for GRA, we have the range of grammar uses, okay? Now for the, G for the GRA, the most useful here and the most obvious um, mistakes of many students are the use of tenses, okay? So, and I think uh, <clears throat> we have also covered this. And finally, we have to cover pronunciation, okay? Today, now I need to know any of you when we say pronunciation, this is my question that I'm going to ask you, okay? <clears throat> so when we say pronunciation, what comes into your mind? What, what, is the, what, is the, what are the things that, for example, if, if yours didn't ask you, young teacher, like, why is my score in pronunciation is only five? Or why is my score in pronunciation is only, uh, only four, okay? So what is, to you, what, is, what, what covers pronunciation, okay? Yeah, what covers um, this uh, last criterion, okay? I want to hear from you first okay, before I introduce um, to you the coverage of pronunciation, okay? So I want to hear from you first, all right? From your own understanding. I want to, I want to hear from, from what you understand about the coverage of the last criterion, which is the pronunciation, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna spin the wheel, okay? Don't worry. Uh, can I volunteer? Ah, uh, yes, I love that. Who is that? Who's who's speaking? Uh, we have here. Who's that? Um, Jovi, Jovi right? Yes, Jovi. Yeah. Yes. So, what do you think is a? What do you think is a? a here, it should, it should do okay here. So, what is it? What do you think? What What do you think covers pronunciation, Jovi? Yeah. I think it covers um with how you pronounce how with how you enunciate the words, okay. also with the stress. And how clear you were able to pronounce the words. Okay, so clarity of the words. Okay, uh, anyone can do volunteering answering. Okay, so for Jovi, it's about clarity. And yeah, stress. the enunciation, uh, the stress, uh, and uh, how. Uh, that's it. Okay, and uh, stress of words. Okay, that's it. Anyone who would like to volunteer? Yeah, I know you. I know you have a, a understanding about this, but I, I want to. Uh, I want to see what's your understanding about the coverage of pronunciation. Okay, any volunteer? Just you know, speak and uh, turn on your mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mary. Uh, mm. Yeah, I think uh, uh, it's also um, talks about um, the accent. I mean, uh, when you pronounce the words. So you 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 want to like emphasize some emphasis of the accent? Okay, that's it. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Anyone? Yeah. Yes, Joe. This is Eileen, right? Eileen. Yes. Katania, yes, Joe. Okay. Um, uh, for my understanding, pronunciation. Uh, um, the um another synonym for that is the articulation of words. Uh, how you articulate the words? Okay. Artic okay, including uh, the sounds and producing it correctly. Sounds okay, and producing sounds correctly. Okay, that's good. Catania, you want to say something, right? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, Catania, uh, what what is it? Okay. Yeah, same with, same with the others for me. Um, uh, pronunciation is the way you pronounce the words with clarity and with being clear. Mm, being yes. clear. In a way that when you say or when you when you talk, you become an effective speaker. Yes, 
Right. People would want to listen to you. So mm -hmm. having the conversation instead of being uh, not not uh, being not uh, what do you call it? Like robotic or monotonous. Uh, like monotonous sound. Okay. Right. Having so, inflection, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Proper right. inflection words. Right, right. So you're you're trying to say here about the monotonous sound, okay? You may have avoiding <clears throat> yeah, yes, the monotonous sound, the, the syllable wording, okay? Rhythm, yes, sir. Having proper rhythm. A rhythm, okay. Yes, that's it. So there is a there is a rhythm of the night, okay? Yeah, there's a rhythm of the voice, okay? Yes, there's a rhythm, the ups and downs, okay? Yes. Yeah, <clears throat> ups and downs or with it. Any, 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 any volunteer, right? So we have clarity, accent, articulation, clarity of the sounding of words, not being monotonous. There's a rhythm, okay? Because I, I want to know like how you assess your students in terms of speaking, okay? Right. Uh, who else wants to say something? Who else wants to volunteer? Hello, sir. Danny, yes, Danny. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Yeah. For me, for pronunciation, um. All about um your speech pattern, how we would uh, yeah, say it. Ah, yeah, speech pattern and how we would say it, like your manner of speaking. Uh, speech pattern. Very good. So there is such thing as a speech pattern or stress pattern. Again, okay? yeah. So that's it. Um, speech pattern or like emphasizing certain, yeah, e emphasis. Okay. Yeah. Very good. That's it. Uh, who else want to try? Yeah, I want to say something. Um, intonation, right? So we have here from Jill, okay? Intonation, up and down intonation, right? Okay, that's it. So uh, these are your answers here. Clarity, enunciation, stress, accent, artic articulation of the word, the sounds, clarity with the sounding of words, not being monotonous like a robot, okay? Uh, it should be, there should be a rhythm, all right? <clears throat> um, and there, the speech pattern, there should be a clear speech pattern. So yes, almost quite similar with mono, not being monotonous, okay? And intonation, so intonation is up and down, okay? Up and down, all right? So let me introduce to you the length of pronunciation, okay? Uh, this is how you evaluate your students, all right? <clears throat> this is how you check your students if, if they have a clear pronunciation, because they may ask you like, what's wrong with my pronunciation teacher? Okay, so they, they will ask you that, okay? And you will give them the right answer, okay? Yeah, and this is the right answer for giving them your pronunciation, okay? Here. Hmm. So, first of all, again, if the speech is uh, unintelligible, or cannot be understood, okay? Right. So the score is automatic too. I'm not sure if you have this kind of student, okay? That's automatic too. And if the speech is band four, okay? So you have to check the you have to check the uh, band descriptor, okay? So it it has a range of pronunciation features. Now this is where we're going to to emphasize the features, okay? Control the features, but lapses are frequent. And um, so what are these features, okay? Okay. Now, regardless of the level of vocabulary, so some, if we are a teacher, for example, we shouldn't focus only on vocabulary, the length, the extent of your student's vocabulary, because that is not the basis for speaking, okay? If all words are mostly unintelligible, okay? So that means their score is two, okay? Now, regardless of the level of the vocabulary, the range and accuracy of grammar use is perfect, and the level of comprehension when spoken in language is unintelligible and causes difficulty for the listener. Now, when we test our student, we shouldn't act as teachers, okay? Because if we act uh, as teachers, um, we could have uh, biases, okay? So instead, we should act as native speakers. If it can't be understood, we can give them two, all right? Then the rest of the criteria for speaking will be meaningless, all right? Now, what are these features? Now, let's focus on features and range, okay? This is what we need to do, <clears throat> all right? 
Now, what are these features of pronunciation? First is sounds. You mentioned about clarity of sounds, enunciation of sounds, and so on. So number one, the first feature is sounds. Each nationality who are uh, non-native English speakers, they have difficulty in different sounds, okay? So for example, I'm not sure who, whose nationality you're teaching, but in Vietnam, their difficulty here is the E sound, okay? They don't have the E sound, okay? Um, uh, the, the long E, okay? the beach sound, okay? So they don't have that, okay? So next, they don't have the uh, ending sound, okay? So for example, uh, for example, makes, they don't have that sound. So they will uh -huh. say make, okay? So I'm, I'm not sure if you're teaching Vietnamese or... Um, uh, something. Can I... Yes, please. Who, who's a katana? katana. Where are you talking? Yes. About please. this semester, they don't have SH ending sound. Yeah, they don't have S ending sound, right? But if they say English, they say English. English, right. That's it. <laughs> so they don't have the sh sound, okay? English. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so that is why you, you have to customize your lessons, okay? Yeah, you have to customize that, okay? Are you all guys teaching Vietnamese students? Yes? Uh, oh, Katania, yes, they... I am. Ah, okay. okay. All of you are teaching Vietnamese students. Yeah. And for Koreans, they also have different difficulties in pronunciation. Okay. Same with Japanese, all right? Also have different difficulty in pronunciation. Okay. So each nationality has different difficulty in sounds. And we have to focus on that. Okay. The sounds, the th and the third sound, and so on. Okay. Ah, uh, tra uh, trailing sounds for Korean set. <laughs> uh, I forgot, yes. Mm, that's it, okay? So the first thing we need to consider is sounds, okay? And focus on that, okay? Because like this, uh, some, 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 some books, okay, or many books or all books don't focus on sounds. They jump directly to stress, syllable stress, okay? Which would be a disaster. So if you, if you jump from the higher level of pronunciation, which is stress or accent, for example, without mastering sounds, it would be a disaster, okay? A perfect disaster for speaking, okay? Then we have your stress. After sounds, you have stress, so syllable stress and sentence stress, okay? Now, what is this uh, syllable stress? I think it's easy. For example, we say permit and permit, all right? Uh, we, have, um, uh, we have, for example, record and record. Now, sentence stress is about emphasizing a word in a sentence. For example, I would say, what do you like, okay? So, what do you like and what do you like, okay? Are not the same, okay? So, what do you like emphasizes one person, which is you. And if I say, what do you like? So, what do you like is normal, okay? So, this is... um the uh, sentence stress, okay? So that's the next criteria, okay? So th these are the features, okay? And you have to pay attention to that, okay? One step at a time, all right? With your student, all right? Then, yes, you're right. Um, Jill is correct. Intonation, okay? Intonation covers a lot of coverage, okay? So what is intonation? There's a pattern. Intonation means up and down, okay? All right? Up and down intonation, and it covers a lot of um, uh, areas. Okay, so we have intonation and attitude, like how you express emotions, for example. Okay, how you express sadness, um, surprise. That that's that's intonation. Okay, uh, how you express um, excitement and and um, uh, what is that um, thrill, etc. So we we that is intonation. Okay. We have attitude, we have um, up and down intonation, all right? Then we have emphasis. Emphasis is, um, what is emphasis? It's like the rule for the basic rule. So let's just, um, uh, I'm not sure if you have this kind of book. And I, I think I will share to you the uh, a book for this one. Yeah. So the, the, the basic... Um, what is that um, rule for uh, for or giving intonation is number one is uh, make your voice louder 
and number two, make your voice longer. And then you have to either go up, up or down. Okay. For example, I don't like going to the beach. Okay. So I don't like. Okay. So you have to make it louder and longer. Okay. And third rule is you either go up or you go down. Okay. That's it. That's for the emphasis. All right. There is an emphasis for excitement, emphasis for surprise, okay? Emphasis for sadness, uh, emphasis for amazed and pausing is the fifth one, okay? The fifth feature, all right? Pausing. <clears throat> what is pausing? So if, if your student asks you, teacher, what is pausing, okay? Um, uh, pausing is like you have to speak straight idea per idea this is what i tell them okay speak straight idea per idea okay so that is pausing so that's very clear for example i would say well last summer so well i pause okay well last summer i went to the beach with my parents so i went to the yeah beach with my parents. So I didn't stop talking until I finished the entire idea. Okay. So that is the meaning by pausing. You have to speak idea per idea. All right. <clears throat> now, this is a struggle because, again, for teachers, we have to start with, a, as I've said, um, as, as, as we have, as we are very clear here, sounds first. Okay. Then master it, at least some basic sounds, like clarity of the sound, some basic sounds, stress. Intonation, emphasis of emotion, and then pausing, okay? Which is the fifth level, okay? <clears throat> okay, so that's for the uh, pausing. So that means we have to speak straight idea per idea. So for example, I would say, well, last summer, I went to the beach with my parents. And as far as I could remember, boss, uh, we went to this uh, fantastic white sand beach at uh, Barakai. Fantastic white sand beach at Barakai. So there's like one idea, all right? So idea, 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 all right? <clears throat> so that's pausing. Okay, it's clear about pausing. And then as reduced sounds, what is reduced sounds, okay? Okay, so that's another feature for speaking, okay? So for example, uh, normally we say, do you like fish? Do you like carrots? I think if you're a parent, you, you often watch um, a songs for kids, okay? And I do, okay? So do you like carrots, all right? But in uh, in um, like natural converse, yes. Who, who is a parent here? Anyone who is a parent here? Uh, we have Joby as a parent, right? Yeah. Who, who you else? like carrots? Yes, yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it. Uh, Jill is also a parent, right? Jill? Yes, I am a parent of two small kids. Two. Oh, how old are your kids, Jill? Uh, the the firstborn is four and the now second one four. is two. Now four and two. two. Oh, four and two. And Jovi, uh, you're also a parent, right? Yeah. Uh, how Wait, old are your kids? Sorry? Three months old. That's the first child? Yeah. Ah, three months is the first. And Eileen is also a parent? Yes, Joe. Yes. Uh, your kids are how old are they? Um, I have two sons, four and two. Four and two, right? I see. I, I have two kids too. One and one and two. One year old and two years old. <laughs> it's very fast. Anyway, um, normally we say, "Do you like? Do you like fish?" But if you reduce the sound, okay, you say "ju," all right? Do you like fish? Yeah. All right. You say, um, for speaking, okay, um, do you like fish, do you like carrots? So there is a, a combination of the and the ya sound, and you combine, you, you join that using the ja sound, okay? And there are some rules to that, and you will learn that in your IELTS course books about, about um, reduced sounds, okay? For example, very common is want to, I want to go there, instead of saying I want to go there, all right? And that's pretty much acceptable in speaking. Okay, yeah, so that's reduced sounds, all right? And um, yeah, and there are a lot more you, you can learn from this one, okay? Yeah, 
and uh, the next crit the next feature is the word groups and phrasing again okay? so the same thing that i said a while ago it's about idea for idea all right so uh word word connections and liaisons are the same with reduced sounds so liaisons means um you connect two words um the the d and the y it sounds like j all right so that's one basic example only okay so these are eight features of pronunciation all right now in uh, ielts speaking we only cover here this one okay and these are just the uh, basic uh, features where your students can get clear okay so starting with sounds stress and just the basic intonation pattern not the complex one all right and uh, especially pausing too and maybe we don't need the uh, word connections yeah and we use emphasis emphasis is, is also important because you need to emphasize your your emotion if you're happy you emphasize you're happy if you're sad if you're sad, you emphasize you're sad, okay? If you're surprised, you emphasize you're surprised. That's emphasis, okay? That's it. So that's for pronunciation, okay? So for many Vietnamese, these are their, these are their difficulties, okay? The oo and the oo sound. And then they have the, uh, yes. Uh, by the way, uh, before I continue, I'd like to tell me about your own observation of your, of your uh, students' main difficulty in terms of sounds. Are you all teaching Vietnamese, right? Everyone, right? For me, not yet, sir. Not yet, okay. Who, who, who? Ah, I'd like you to just to turn on your phone, and if you if you wish to speak, uh, please speak right away. And I want you to tell me about uh, some of the difficulties of the sounds your students have, all right? And I want you to share in the class, okay? And then I'm gonna share to you, of course, what I have observed from these Vietnamese students, okay? Anyone? Just turn on your phone, okay? Uh, who's teaching here? A uh, Jill. Jill, you mentioned about. Trailing sound. What is trailing sound? I had this is my first time to hear about trailing sound. Hi. Yes. Um I, I, I everyone uh Jill says uh -huh. trailing sounds and I, I trailing I'm not sounds quite familiar with this kind of sound. Yes, yeah? um most yeah. Koreans that I thought uh, yeah. have uh or exhibit trailing sounds when they speak. For example, the s sound, guys su like that. Ah. So that's the trailing sound, like an extra sound at the end of a word or a sentence. Mm -hmm. All right, right. So when you speak every word, there's like, there's an extra sound connecting to the other word, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. Very good. Anyone? Yes, anyone who'd like to volunteer? Yes. Catania, mm -hmm. yes. What have you observed from your students? Any difficulties? Uh, in, uh, what sound difficulties your, your students have in terms of pronunciation, mm -hmm. of course, yeah? I think for some Chinese, sir, the Chinese R and the L. Ah, R and they, L. Yes, for Koreans, they can't pronounce the letter R. Like, for example, I use the R the way we say, we say rooster. They oh, say okay. rooster. Uh, so the, the interchange of the R and L sound. Uh, okay. okay, okay, I see, I see. All right, so anyway, the first thing you need to do is identify their difficulty in sounds. And then after you identify that, if it's unintelligible, uh, we have to correct that, okay? So for my students, yes, these are their difficulty of sounds, okay? The R uh sound, the th and the th sound for Vietnamese, okay? Just to give you a, the a uh sound as well. I give you a background if, just in case if you're teaching some Vietnamese students. You have the th, the th sound, the the what is that the smooth th and the the th sound okay that's one the th that's it and then we have here yeah those are just just common basic difficulties for some Vietnamese the ending s sound the th the 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 e the u the u sound and so on okay uh the rest uh, are clear except for those I mentioned okay then we have here. Uh, we have here the uh, stress, and I think um, we've learned this at school, right? Like uh, rebel and rebel. So we, we have to, now my point here is that, yes, I, I don't need to emphasize more about this, okay? But my point here is that we have to do one level at a time, okay? So that means uh, we shouldn't focus um, like mastering, for example, accent or liaisons without first, for example, mastering this one 
without first mastering the sounds, okay? Because the moment that their, uh, for example, sound becomes unintelligible, okay? So that is the moment that their score is two. Now, if you jump to a higher level of pronunciation, that would be a disaster without correcting the basic one, which is the sounds, okay? That is a disaster. So, and then if you, if you notice that they have, uh, they exhibit clear sounds, then you move on to stress, then you move on to uh, uh, emphasis, or pausing, and, and so on, okay? Now, these are the, just the basic ways of making intonation. It may make your voice louder, make it longer, and make a rising or falling intonation, okay? So that's it. <clears throat> okay, so that's all for speaking. Um, yes, and I think we have covered uh, mm -hmm. a lot for uh, speaking and uh, for position is finished, all right? So I just have to, um, what is that? Recap about, um, and before we end, okay? Uh, recap about, Pronunciation features, okay? So which are the following? Yeah, here. And um, <clears throat> then finally, we have to check here the common mistakes for speaking, okay? So these are the features which you have to check um, in detail. Okay, the sounds, stress, uh, basic patterns, pausing, and emphasis, okay? <clears throat> And um, yeah, just give me a few minutes and let's check here the common mistakes in speaking and then uh, we can uh, 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 we can uh, finish our session today, okay? So the common mistakes in speaking is number one, the fluency, very short answers, show hesitations. Next is long pauses. So we recommend pausing, but not that long pauses that the thinking, you know, self-correction. Uh, instead of saying his, her, or an, him, so th there's an interchange of uh, like uh, pronouns, for example, and not fully understood the question. Fillers, fillers like arms, as, yeah, you know, that is not allowed for speaking, all right? For fluency. Next, for vocab, two simple words. Now, I, I don't say advanced words. Um, by the way, let me just clarify. I don't say advanced words. I would say appropriate words, okay? I don't say advanced words. What are appropriate words? For example, if you say big, all right? Uh, for example, if I say, um, uh, for example, if I say big, uh, big animal, so I, I, I can say huge animal, okay? Because big can be an, an, anything, all right? Uh, for example, big house. All right, big can be anything. So I, I would just say spacious house, okay? Yeah. So I don't say uh, advanced words. I don't say two simple words, but words are not very specific, okay? Yeah. And then not paraphrase a question. Um, use of words are incorrect, and you'll notice that. For grammar, not use uh, complex sentences. The mistakes for subject verb agreements, prepositions in, on, at, etc. And pronunciation here is I discourage question intonation. For example, you would say, uh, My name is Joe. I live in a, a Ving City in Vietnam and I like my family. Da -da -da, da -da -da. That's question intonation and that should be discouraged. Okay. And that's it. Uh, the sounds, uh, word stress, reduced sounds, all right. For example, not country, but country, okay? For example, just, just as an example, okay? Yeah, that's it. So um, any questions for our uh, session today uh, before we end? Do you have any questions? And uh, for next meeting, I haven't done any demo today, so I will do demo next meeting. And then after, after my demo for listening and reading, I will have, I will continue for writing and task one, task two, and uh, evaluating task one and how to check writing task one and task two fast and correct okay any questions um for today's session none sir thank you yes yeah thank you so much really for your cooperation and for your um active uh, volunteer in giving your um your answers for today's session uh see you next meeting and enjoy the rest of your weekend okay bye everyone thank you bye, so much. Bye. Bye, see you thank next you. saturday see you next yeah. saturday goodbye, bye. goodbye. thank you very much yeah